Hello everyone. Happy Saturday. I hope you guys are having a great weekend right now. Um, you guys are live here on the Redesign with Prima Facebook page, Facebook group. Um, my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy and I am popping on today because I'm working on a Redesign with Prima stuff. So I want to show you guys what I'm working on, a project that I have. So let me back the camera up and I'm going to introduce you guys to the piece I'm working on. So it is this huge armoire. In fact, I probably can't even get it all on camera. So this huge armal. We're going to focus down here on the bottom today because that's the part I'm concentrating on. Um, and what I'm going to do is I want to decorate this drawer. So my thought right now is that I am going to use, this is a very rough and rustic piece. It's not glamorous at all. If you guys um, can see and hear me okay, pop on and let me know where you're watching from. I always like to see where you guys are all from. Um, but my thought is I want to take these drawer sides and I want to make kind of something really fun on here. And I'm going to use the Redesign with Prima um, decoupage papers. Let me show you guys those. And then I think I'm going to do them inside the drawer too. So, so a couple little like sneak peeks because otherwise there's not a lot of places I can add pattern and interest. Stacy, you're supposed to be out eating Mexican food right now. Why are you watching me? Um, so the redesign with Prima decoupage papers come in a variety of designs and I've got a couple out today. One of them is this one here, which is called abstract arrow. And the other one I'm looking at is called watercolor flora. Can you guys see the colors in those? I feel like they complement the colors I'm using on my piece. So this piece is done in a base of Dixie Belle mermaid tail. I've got Dixie Belle Aubergine in here, and then I did a wash, a color wash, which I'm probably gonna go on after here and show you guys on my Facebook page how to do a color wash with the paint. Um, so one door has the wash on it and one door doesn't. So this has a wash of um, metallic paint in steel magnolia. Um, and it kind of tones the colors down and it adds a metallic sheen over the top. It's like a glaze. The metallic wash is acting like a glaze for me. So these are the two papers I'm looking at. So let me show you what these guys look like outside of the package. Okay, so this is the watercolor flora. And I love the colors in this. Can you guys see that? So these papers have a pattern repeat. So if I match these up, um, for this particular piece, I don't need to. I think I've got them, I have one of these backwards. Anyways. Um, the colors in this I think are, are perfect and they're really fun and vibrant. Um, and it comes in two sheets like this. And this white background one is a good, a good example to show you. It's semi-translucent. Can you guys see that? You can see my hand through the paper. So it's more of a thin fabric. People compare it to the feel of a dryer sheet almost. So it's more of a thin fabric than it is an actual paper. And that just means that you can, I mean, it is really hard to mess these up because they're so thick and durable. Um, so this is one that I'm looking at. And the other one is this abstract arrow design. And I just think this, um, it, look, it reminds me of Dixie Belle Plum Crazy is the color that I would coordinate this with. And um, I just think this is really fun against my background colors. So which one do you guys think I should use on this piece? Help me out. I want to put one on the drawer sides and I want to put one inside the drawer. I just don't know. I don't know which one to do which. Let me show you the drawer to my piece here. So this is a, um, it's a reproduction. It's an Indonesian piece. Um, kind of what you would find at like Cost Plus World Market where it looks old. It's very rough and rustic, but it's a modern reproduction. And then I want to show you guys that on the drawer sites that I'm going to decoupage, I put a base coat of paint. And the reason is because I showed you guys on camera that those papers are a little bit translucent. So if you leave it your raw wood, you're going to see through to underneath. So for example, on this white one here, if you want it to show through white, then you should do a base color of white underneath your paper. Now I did a dark purple and it's going to make my, the colors in my paper a little bit richer, darker, deeper. Um, there we go. Okay, sorry guys, I didn't have any comments, so I just thought you guys were really quiet today. The flower, okay, so you think pink inside and flower on the drawer sides and flowers outside. Okay, I kind of like that, I could go with that. Yeah, Ginger's in here with me right now. 
Stacey, you want to hear a gender story? So we'll do this on the drawer sides. We'll do this first. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside, and I'll probably put this inside my drawer. Um, I do want to do a base coat of my Dixie Belle Plum Crazy um, underneath this. And I didn't know what order I was going to go in, so I'll have to come back to that and do those off camera probably or do the base coat with you. Yeah, Ginger was in here with me today. Ginger is my one-year-old boxer, you guys, and I absolutely love her. So let's turn this drawer a little bit. I'm going to stand it up here, and I'll tip it down for you guys a couple times. Um, and then this is the paper we're going to put on the drawer side. So the cool thing about this is it's actually too big. I may get both of these drawer sides out of one sheet of my paper, which would be nice. I am not a fan of waste, and I will use a product as much as I can. But I kind of like that that deep purple underneath, which is Dixie Belle Aubergine, is going to tone these colors down a little bit and just make them kind of mild. Um, so Ginger's out here with me. Ginger's one year old and we live on five acres. And for a year now, she's been able to run on our five acres and she's never left our property. Which we thought, wow, she's the best dog ever. We just love this dog. She's so good. But all of a sudden, like a couple weeks ago, she figured out, huh, there's nothing keeping me here. Like I can go wherever I want. And she started taking off. Like all of a sudden, she started, here she is right here. Ginger started taking off. Huh, her mama's. So we're trying, we got her a, a radio collar and we're trying it out right now. And so far she's sticking to me like glue. So that's a good sign. If we can keep Ginge from running off, because you know what she likes? She likes to make friends with all the turkeys and the deer. Oh, I'm pretty girl. So she's sticking to me like glue today with her new radio collar on that's good I don't want her to run away and I mean she goes and doesn't stop okay so let's lean this drawer a little bit down so you guys can see it I'm going to use this stool to lean my drawer down on kind of at an angle so you guys can see what I'm working on like that Tilt my camera down. Okay, so this drawer right here, one thing I want you guys to notice is how the drawer glides go. Do you see this? This is where my drawer glide sits. So I'm actually going, it's going to get friction from the glide. So I'm actually going to cut that part out. Um, and I'm just going to decoupage a line on the top and a line on the bottom. And that way that center part won't get friction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this and then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut the paper to the size of my drawer. Okay, so I got my knife out. Use my drawer to hold that. Okay, let me try to read my comments for a second. Yeah, Ginger is my, she is my painting partner, but she's not, she's hard to have on camera. She has a cute nose. I love boxer faces. They have those goofy eyes that are too far apart. Um, so, so far I'm thrilled the collar is working because obviously like we don't want her disappearing. You know, our neighbors don't really mind, but we don't want to impose on them either. Okay, so I'm going to take this and just using an, an X-Acto knife, I'm going to run it right along that crevice here where my drawer glide is. And I can trim this after it's applied. So I just want to get a rough trim right here. I'm just going to run my knife flush with the bottom of this drawer glide. Making sure I hold it in place at the top. Making sure I do not slice my finger off. Okay, and then I'll cut the end with scissors. Um, so you guys saw how easy I sliced through that with my X-Acto knife. That gave me a nice clean cut. And now I'm just going to cut this piece off. This is my piece that I need to use. I'm going to cut that with my scissors at the end. I'm cutting it just a hair long because if I've learned anything, it's measure 200 times, cut once. All right. Let's hold this up and see if my cut is pretty good. And 
And I could flip this or flop this whatever direction I want it to go. I really like this bright pink over here and that's gonna be really cute with those arrows inside the drawer. It'll tie that really bright pink color. Okay, so that's a really good fit. So what I'm gonna to use to attach this is going to be my Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. And I set my brush down somewhere. Let me find my brush. Alrighty, Brandy. Well, I had out a Dixie Belle Mini, but instead I'm just gonna use, oh, here it is. There we go, it was under my piece. Okay, so I'm gonna use Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. And I like Satin Clear Coat because this can be used as my adhesive underneath the paper. And it's also gonna be my sealant over the top of the paper. Um, one thing I like to use is a brayer. Let me grab my brayer really quick. Okay, I got my brayer out. Sorry guys, I forgot that piece. I try to be well prepared, but sometimes I forget something. Okay, so th this is a brayer. A brayer is just a rolling pin type tool and I've got a couple different types. This one's got a little harder um, silicone. This one's a little bit softer. I don't really have any preference. These are a craft store item, but I'm gonna use a brayer doing this and that's gonna flatten my paper out on the side of my drawer. So let's go ahead and put a coat on here of my Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. Um, so I like to use Satin Clear when I'm decoupaging. Dixie Belle has um, a full line of clear coats. They've got the regular clear coat in flat, satin, and a gloss finish. They also have Dixie Belle Gator Hide. Gator Hide is their toughest clear coat. It's the most durable of the clear coats. It's water repellent versus just water resistant. So it's great on pieces that need a little more durability, like dining table tops. She's okay, baby, she's okay. Um, like dining table tops, the tops of dressers that will get um, heavy use. Those kinds of pieces are great for decoupage, or for Dixie Belle Gator Hide. I don't necessarily like Gator Hide for decoupage, and the reason is that Gator Hide has a shorter open time than the regular clear coats. And when I'm doing decoupage, I like to have a little bit of time to be able to set my paper, move my paper if I need to, um, and the Satin Clear has a little bit longer open time for that. So I laid an ample coat on here. I wasn't shy about it. It's a pretty thick coat. And then I'm gonna go ahead. Now one thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure my paper matches up when I lay that second piece. So I'm gonna make sure on here, okay that I lay it so that the pattern will match up with the piece underneath it. So I'm gonna put it on, and then I'm gonna show you guys something. Okay, I can press it into my satin clear coat. Watch what I can do. I can pull this back off if my placement is totally wrong, and then I would just put a fresh coat of my satin on there. You guys, my comments are not, there we go, they're not updating. Uh, plopping down in my chair, those days are short-lived. Then I can just refresh my clear coat on there and I can go ahead and place this right back on again. So I love that this paper, you can place it and replace it and fix it and move it and adjust it. See there, I needed to adjust it. And it's not gonna tear like a thin tissue paper would. Okay, I'm pressing this into my clear coat. Now this paper is, I've got a helper out here too. This is my son Ashton. Hi. It's my nine-year-old. Got lots of helpers today. Um, this paper is semi-porous. Let's see if I can show you up close. There are pores in this paper. It's woven. So the satin clear starts to, hi Rebecca, starts to come through the front of the paper. And that's okay. I want it to do that. Now I'm going to use my brayer and I'm just really going to sandwich this paper into my satin clear. Now what it did is it found an air bubble in there that it wasn't laid perfectly straight. That's good. So I'm gonna fix that, correct that placement.
I want my satin clear to start coming through those holes. It's going to saturate this paper and that's going to marry it to this drawer front. So once I've got it on here, it's a little large on both ends and I'm going to trim that. I can do it a little bit now, but I usually like to wait until it's fully dry to come back and trim my ends. But it's really easable, easily trimmable using my same exacto knife. See how easy I just trimmed that little end off that was cut too large? So then I'm going to come back with my satin clear, my same brush, and I'm going to brush it over the top. And I can tell it starts saturating my paper. I'll bring you guys in for a better view here. But it starts saturating the paper. So I can tell I make sure I have a nice thick coat on here. And I'll come back after this is dry and trim all around my edges so I've got a perfect snug fit to this piece of my drawer. But I can tell because it starts changing color a little bit and I can see the color underneath my drawer start coming through. And that's how I know it's completely saturated. A little wrinkle right there. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let this dry. And this is going to be attached when it's dry. And I'll be able to trim off like this edge here is cut a little bit large. And then down here isn't a perfectly straight line. So I will trim that. But when that satin clear dries, it will have come up from underneath the paper and then I've got it over the top of the paper and it encapsulates that paper and makes it one piece with my drawer. So I'm going to come down here and do the same thing with the second sheet of my paper. So I wanted it to match up with the one right above it. One thing I can show you is you can tell the color difference changes from that top piece being saturated with the clear coat. Look how much deeper it is compared to this one I'm going to put underneath. But I want, even though I'm going to have a gap in the middle for my drawer glide, I do want the pattern to match up. You want to hold that on that side for me, baby? Hang on, let me get it closer to the edge. All right. Okay, you want to hold that right there? And then I'm going to come through and I'm just going to cut this with my exacto knife. This stuff is super easy to cut. Easy to cut, easy to lay. It's probably the easiest thing you can decoupage with. Whoops, dropped my knife. I'm going to try to not slice my son's finger off right now. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that gave me a cut and then I'll come back with my scissors and I'll cut this little edge right here. This is driving me nuts that the comments keep stopping. It's going to be a really pretty piece finish. So this customer, I actually did um, a, another piece for her and we're matching that. But I, I, I never like matches to be an exact match. They're complementary, but not an exact match. So then when I come back onto the other side of my drawer, I'm gonna use this sheet that's left over. And then this stuff also seams together really nice. So I've got a lot extra here. Um, if you wanna have a frayed edge, can you do that? I don't see why you couldn't. You could do, you could, um, I guess you could do a tear instead of a cut. You could tear the fabric and it would fray a little bit. I also, it also wants to fray if you sand it. Um, these papers, Teresa, these are the Mulberry Decoupage Papers by Redesign with Cream. I'm going to grab one of these packages over there. All right, I'll pop you guys back up. So these are the Mulberry uh, Tissue Papers by 
redesign with Prima. This one I'm working with is called Watercolor Flora. And then inside my drawers, I'm gonna complement it with Abstract Arrow. So my drawer is gonna be lined and then it's gonna have a peekaboo side on it too. Um, Teresa, I put a link above in the post. Oh, well, and it's so weird. If I don't keep updating them, my comments are not updating, which makes it really hard to communicate. Um, I put a link above in the post and you can do a search there. They're uh, the Mulberry Decoupage Papers by Redesign with Prima and they do carry them at the link I put in the post. And there's several different designs of these. So these are just two designs that I'm using, but there's florals, there's um, uh, the Abstract Arrow, which is a fun geometric pattern. Um, go ahead and put another, is it dripping over there? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm just freshening up this coat here. I like it saturated. And it doesn't wrinkle or bubble. You guys, it doesn't wrinkle or bubble. It doesn't wrinkle or bubble. I can't stress that enough. Because those are the problems that make decoupage so hard. This stuff does not wrinkle or bubble. You're not going to have to get out your iron. Iron the paper down. Once this is dry, this clear coat is dry, I'm going to be able to trim this paper. I can add as many coats of clear over it as I want for protection. But other than that, there's nothing I'm gonna to have to do to this once it's dry. So that was my brayer, just flattens it into that satin clear coat. Um, I'm using Dixie Belle clear coat to lay it. And then I'm going over the top with my Dixie Belle satin clear coat. And I saturate this paper, because like I said, it's going to seep through from underneath. It's going to seep through the paper from over the top. And it is going to be a seamless match with my furniture piece. So I left this uh, section in the center blank because that's where my drawer glide goes. And I don't want to have friction over a paper for my drawer glide. Um, so I just cut my paper around that. These are gonna be little peekaboo drawer sides and I'll just have a, the center will just be Dixville aubergine that peeks through in there. So once this is dry, I'll come back and I'll trim these little edges so it's perfectly straight. Like right here, it hangs a little bit long. Um, but I make sure it's good and saturated. All right, so I like that. So let me show you guys an up close view of it. It's wet right now. Now this paper does dry with a really slight texture. Um, the clear coat helps with that some. You can see the, the glare on it from the wet clear coat. But there's no bubbles in there. It is flat. That paper is seamless to my drawer side. So when it dries, I will come back and I will trim this and I'm gonna have a super cute peekaboo drawer side and one sheet so that it comes with two sheets in the package. Let me show you guys again. Please set this drawer like this so the paper can dry. Comes with two sheets like this in the package. And one sheet is gonna do both sides of this drawer, which is, oh gosh, it's probably eight inches deep. So I'll have a full other sheet left over if I wanted to do like the top drawers on a vanity or something else like that. And then I'll get two projects out of this one. Let me tell you the dimensions on here. They measure 19 inches by 30 inches. So 19 inches deep by 30 inches wide when you put the two sheets together. And I only need half of it for this piece. When I do the inside of the drawer, I will need both sheets to cover the inside. I'm gonna do the inside with this. And then it'll coordinate with the colors I have on the outside, which is the teal and the purple. And then inside I'll have this bright plum color, just as a, like a cute accent inside my drawer. So that's my plan. But I'm going to go ahead, oh, this is killing me. <coughs> Sorry, you guys, my comments are not showing up unless I manually refresh them every time. So what am I using to adhere? And that's just a Facebook glitch today. To adhere this, I just used a, a coat of Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat under the paper and another coat over the paper, and it sandwiches that paper in there. And I showed in the beginning, these are called 
uh, tissue papers, decoupage papers, but they're more of a lightweight fabric. So they don't rip or tear or bubble or anything. It's porous, so you do want to put a, a coat of your paint underneath it. So you're not seeing the wood from underneath there. Um, in my case, I put a coat of Dixie Belle Aubergine underneath. So let's pop up to the door on this and we're gonna work on the door a little bit. Uh, Diane, if your volume just went off, you can try going out and going back in again and see if that brings it back again. I'm not seeing anybody else say volume is an issue, but the comments are an issue. So I'm going to pop this up on its end. I'm gonna push this to the side and let this dry. Ginger is showing me why she's usually not allowed to be out here doing my life. <laughs> All right, I'm just putting another coat of this clear on here. Got a little piece of debris stuck in there, so I'm gonna get that clear, and then let me move this out of the way. We're gonna put a stencil on the, on the door front. Oh, what's, oh, do you see that, Sheila? You have an eye, girl, I'm telling you. All right, so this drawer is gonna be out of our way and we're gonna come up to the top of this piece and work on the doors. And I'll show you what I got. How cute is this? I don't know if I can part with this. It's a jewelry box. Look at that. It's incredible. With really pretty blue lining. So I'll clean this up. I might keep this one. Really cute. Yeah, it's a jewelry box. Just a great piece of... It's a ginger. That's what that is. I need another project like a hole in my head, right? Uh, you remember the jingle bell sound is ginch. It's ginch's jingle bells, huh? <laughs> okay, so on the front of this door right here, you guys can see this side right here, I just have mermaid tail and aubergine. This one, I've got a wash of metallic paint on here. Let's see. Okay. Got to back it up a little bit to try to get as much in as I can. So I've got a wash of metallic paint on this side. And you can see it just tones the colors down and it adds a metallic sheen onto the front of these doors. If I move the door, you can see it a little bit better. So I've only done the wash on this side. And let me show you what I'm going to put over the top of it. Now a lot of this piece is in its ugly phase right now, but I'm going to take a stencil. This is the Imperial Damask stencil, also by Redesign, and I'm going to run this right down the center of my door in gilding wax. So I do need a little bit of spray adhesive. grab my spray adhesive so I'm going to use a little bit of spray adhesive on the back of my stencil this is 3m super 77 spray adhesive alive with that jewelry box I probably won't get to that jewelry box for like a year it'll be sitting out here for a year I bet you anything ask me 2021 oh my fur babies are driving me nuts today that is our cat you can tell him what his name is Chung. <laughs> That's our cat Chung. He started out being named Lilo, but he's called Chung. And that's because he, he's a Chung. <laughs> he's our fat cat. <laughs> and then um, we got a cat named Adventure Cat. 
So I'm going to take my stencil and I'm going to spray the back of it lightly with a little bit of spray adhesive. I'm just doing the center because I'm only stenciling the center of this door here. And I want to center it onto this door. And that little bit of spray adhesive just makes the back of my stencil tacky. Because this is such a detailed stencil, I want all these little bits to stick down onto my furniture piece. So it just attaches them so I don't have gaps on all these little pieces. And then I'm just going to hold it in place. I'm trying to read at the same time. I have lots of helpers tonight. It's distracting me more than anything. Like I said in the beginning, so Ginger's out here with me because we're training her right now. She figured out she can leave our property. <laughs> so she's being trained. She has to stay. So there's a little piece of my stencil that I want to stick a little bit better. So I just sprayed that. And then I'm going to hold this up with some tape. Just so it doesn't want to move. And so all the weight of this stencil is not stuck on that spray adhesive. Yeah, I apologize. I try to be free of distractions when I go live, but today is not that day. It's Saturday, and I we are a busy house, right? Aren't we all? Okay, and then I'm going to stick all these bits down. And make sure they're all stuck down. This is a really intricate stencil. It can be a difficult pattern to stencil because it's so intricate. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then I'm going to use my Redesign with Prima stencil brushes for this. These are some of my favorite stencil brushes. They come in a pack like this. They're from the Art Basics line. And they come in packs of three or packs of five, I believe. So this is going to complement the metallic that I, the wash that I did over the top of my paint finish. And I'm going to stencil this in gilding wax. This is the Redesign with Prima decor wax and this color is called diamond dust can you guys see it it looks like diamond dust it is one of my favorite stencils i love this stencil it is gorgeous. it's really well used but i don't worry about it because actually i have another one too okay so i'm going to bring you guys in a little bit so you can see where i'm working you won't see my beautiful face so I'm just going to take my stencil brush and I'm going to tip it into my gilding wax. Gilding waxes are really nice to stencil with because they don't want to bleed like a paint does. So I've got a little bit of my gilding wax on my brush and I'm going to start working at this stencil. And I just need a really light coat. It's going to be a very subtle shimmery effect over the top of these dark paint colors. So I don't want to have thick edges on the along the edges of my stencil. So I'm going to make sure I don't let my gilding wax build up along the edges of my stencil. Um, I do more rubbing with gilding wax because like I said, it doesn't want to bleed like a paint does. So you can see this is the area right here that I've got my um, gilding wax on there. So I'm going to refill my brush again. This is going to take me two stencil placements to get down the center of my door. So this is just the first one. I'm going to hold my door with my other hand because it wants to swing. I took all the latches off so I don't have any way to close this right now. And I'm paying attention to every, like, there, like there's a little raised edge up here. So I'm just making sure that I run my brush against that so that I'm not lifting it as I'm brushing. I would lift it if I went this way. So when I brush, I'm brushing this way. This is the little edge right here that wants to lift. It's just got a little bend in it right here. And I don't want to pull that back. So I just make sure I brush against it instead of towards it. I'm going to refill my brush again. I'm using very little gilding wax, trying to keep it fairly even on my brush. Oh, diamond dust is gorgeous. It's just a really subtle metallic sheen and it looks great on dark colors. So some gilding waxes work better. Um, so this is really pretty right here. I could leave it shaded where my paint colors are a little bit darker in some areas if I want. Just do a lighter application of the gilding wax. 
Diamond dust looks great against darker colors. Some gilding waxes work better on light colors, some work better on dark colors, but diamond dust I like on darker colors. Because it's just a shimmer. It doesn't have an overt color to it. I guess it would be this kind of ivory color. Need this side. So that spray adhesive really helps because it doesn't, my, my stencil is nice and attached. It doesn't want to lift and I can work my um, gilding wax as evenly as possible. I do want to try to get it as even as possible. Um, this stencil, how do I clean my stencils? Um, Chris, I just did a live on that on this same page last week, I believe. Um, if you go and search Brandy, and I think it says how to clean stencils, there's a live on redesign on the same page that I did on how I clean my stencils. This was actually one of the ones I just cleaned. Believe it or not, this is the cleaned version. Um, I had a lot of stencils to clean, so I probably didn't clean them as well as I could have, but it's enough that they're totally usable again. And I clean them using um, citrus strip. I put them in a big washing machine pan with a thin layer of citrus strip, let it sit a little bit, and then I come and just rinse them off. I am searching for a better stencil adhesive. I'd love to find a water-based stencil adhesive that will wash off better. But that's usually what I'm washing off is the spray adhesive, is most of what's left on my stencils because I always rinse them free of paint as soon as I'm done using them. But the spray adhesive does build up a little bit. I wish you guys could see this. Metallics are extremely hard to catch on camera. So I bring it in. I can see the shimmer of this against my paint and it's beautiful. So see how it's just adding a little light shade? That's how I can tell where the parts that I've done already. Um, you guys, I will probably pop onto my page after this and do a couple things with you guys. I have a few uh, non-redesigned things I'm working on too. So if you're still hanging out after this, come over to Brush by Brandy. I'll probably go live there. Give me a little few minutes to have a break in between and I'm gonna pop onto my own page after this. I'm trying to get better about making videos because a lot of me just likes to come out and sit and get into the zone. And I gotta remember, teach Brandy, teach, teach. So I'm going slow. I'm trying to get this nice and even. I don't want to rush it as much as I want to pull the stencil back and see the magic that happens when you pull the stencil back. Hi, Carolyn. How are you, sweet girl? Hey. Oh my gosh, Adrian's on here. Um, I'm going to apologize to everyone who's popping on. The comments are not updating unless I manually go back and check them and, and refresh them on my screen. So I'm trying to interact but it means I have to go manually update my comments too. So what we've done with this piece today is I did some decoupage with the redesigned decoupage papers that is currently drying and now I'm throwing a stencil on using redesign with Prima Decor Wax in Diamond Dust and their Imperial Damask stencil which is one of my favorite stencils um, some of the redesigned stencils were recently discontinued. I'm unsure if this is one of them. Maybe Adrian can tell us. Um, if so, I hope they bring it back because it is absolutely one of my favorites. If you cannot find it, feel free to message me and I do have a couple places you can get a very similar stencil as well. You can message me on my page at Brushed by Brandy. I'm almost done with this placement and then you guys will get to see. Um, Sherry at Cobalt Blue Cabin. Sherry, uh, my husband is out with my other two kids and they're swimming as we speak. Oh, no. they're out of the pool already? Yeah, they're watching a movie. And then right. Logan's taking a bath. They're watching a movie and my younger one's taking a bath now. They're out there, they've been out there every day. We just got water in our pool last weekend. We just put a pool in and we're loving it. 
I'll tell you guys, there's nothing like painting all day in the 100 degree weather in California and then going and jumping in the pool afterwards. How much is that? Ginger. I'm gonna break a Okay, I'm almost done. I'm trying to get this as even as possible. I really um, don't want this to look splotchy. I just want a really thin, even coat of my gilding wax. So I know you guys are waiting with bated breath and anticipation for me to take this stencil off. The good news is, is I'm down here at the bottom and we're getting there. So I'm using a little bit of a swirling motion. I'm digging this in. This piece has crevices in it. It's, um, it's a reproduction, but it's a very rustic looking piece. And I want the uh, diamond dust to sit in these crevices here and have extra sparkly little spots in there. So I'm using a swirling to kind of dig it into some of those. There are little pock marks in the wood, I guess. Little um, saw marks and things like that. It's a very rustic piece. But I love the, um, I don't know, the contradiction between metallics on a really rustic piece because metallics are usually thought of as glamorous and refined. And then you add a little a rustic element and it can be really fun. So these are gonna have a really pretty shimmer in them. It even has that authentic door squeak here, listen. Mom. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make a song with it. <laughs> My kids watch too many YouTubers. Uh, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so that's the bottom. Let's see what else do we got here. Oh, this is so cute. Like a little bit of ketchup to pour. I know, but stick with me, Sherry. It's a long spot. Hey, at least it's not the full stencil, right? It's just the center part. So this piece right here, my, uh, my spray adhesive didn't get as well. So I'm going to hold it down with my finger and go around that piece just to make sure it doesn't pop up. And see, just me holding it made the spray adhesive kind of kick in. All right, I just have this little part right here and then I can pull it off. Trust me, I want to get there too. I'm using barely any of my diamond dust. I know you can't tell because it doesn't show on this brush, but that's it. I have barely any gilding wax because I don't want it to be thick. It's just a very subtle shimmer that goes with the metallic wash that I've got over the top of this paint. And then I'm going to use some other gilding waxes to kind of emphasize this too. All right, let me give one more refill. And then I will peel this off. These stencils have really nice repeat patterns on them too. So because I'm gonna need to come in underneath this and place it again, I will just find the uh, repeat in the pattern. I'm just cleaning it up, making sure I didn't miss any spots. Although if I did miss a spot, I would just hold the stencil back up and fill that spot back in. I've got a little spot up here. And I need to even out. Okay, you guys ready? I'm gonna back my camera up so you can see the full section I just did. I just did down the center of this door right here. Okay, I'm gonna pull this back. I can feel my spray adhesive, wanted to keep that stuck on there. Can you guys see that? It's so pretty. So let me bring you guys in close so you can see this up close. Oh, it has a face. See him? I should have put my stencil upside down. How pretty is that up against those colors? And then I've got the metallic paint that's in the crevices here. So that is my stencil. So 
So I'm going to do that on the other door too, and then I'm going to do it on the sides as well. Only on the sides, I'm going to break it up a little bit so it looks a little bit more worn. I'm going to do it more, a little more splotchy because the sides are so large. But that is a stencil with gilding wax. Super easy to do. Gilding waxes are phenomenal to stencil with. So let's check on our um, drawer side. I love that look. I'm thrilled with this. And then what my plan is, is I'm going to take some Dixie Belle gilding waxes. This is Anastasia. Let me show you what I'm going to do. And let me find a brush. Okay, I'm just going to take some of my gilding waxes. And I'm going to brush them into some of these crevices up here around this box. So then I'm going to use some of my gilding wax to shade with. Let me show you what that did. So that was uh, Dixie Belle Anastasia. And see how it just gave me another color in here? So I'm going to do that with Anastasia to give me that plum color. And that's going to tie in with the plum inside my drawer from my decoupage paper and the plum on my drawer side also in my decoupage paper. See? Not all accidents, I swear. So I'm going to come around and I'll do this kind of randomly, like a little spot here. So I've got these kind of red areas. I can rub it out with my finger. So I'll kind of blend that in with my finger a little bit. And then I'm going to use some turquoise teal gilding wax. Let me find another brush. I'm using all natural bristle stencil brushes for my gilding waxes. This is turquoise teal gilding wax. These are discontinued on the Dixie Belle website. They're coming back soon in a different formulation, but a lot of the Dixie Belle retailers still have all of the gilding waxes. And with my turquoise teal, I'll use that. In in spots to make them more teal. You know, feather this out a little bit. But that's how I'm going to get the variation in the metallics too. So a lot of shading with gilding waxes on this piece. I'll smooth this out a little bit because that's a little abrupt. And then I'll do the same thing with some of my diamond dust too. So that was a little bit of diamond dust I just put over here. So I'm gonna keep doing that all around this piece. So it's got little flashes of metallic color all the way around it. So let's check on our drawer and then I will pop off so my drawer is still very much wet. This is the drawer side that we decoupaged at the front of the video. It's still very much wet. Um, when it's dry, I will trim the edges, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side of them so it can dry at the same time. But this is my piece, so you can kind of see where it's going. So you can see from the door that I started with, which is a very, it's a pretty paint finish, but then when I just refine it a little bit with that stencil and the gilding waxes, it just adds a little bit extra depth and dimension. I'm a huge fan of layering products. Diamond Dust. Diamond Dust is the redesign with Prima Decor Wax that I stenciled with. That's what that stencil is done in. It's done in a wax. So let me talk about this. This wax will dry to permanent in 24 hours. I don't have to top coat it. However, I will let it dry and I will go ahead and spray this entire piece with Dixie Belle Gator Hide. <laughs> when I say metallic purple, um, I've got a wash of metallic paint over this whole thing. I'm using gilding waxes. So this is a plum color gilding wax here. I need to clean that up a little bit. Um, 
Yeah, uh, Donna, go back and and you can you'll be able to watch it from the beginning in a minute, and you'll see everything we've done on we've done on the video today. So that's where I'm going with this piece. You guys can see kind of what it will look like when I'm done. So I'm going to let you guys go. If you guys still feel like hanging out, pop over to my page at Brushed by Brandy. Give me a few minutes, 10 minutes or so, and I'll pop on there and I'm gonna do some other stuff live with you too. We're gonna make replicas of hardware. We're gonna make it ourselves. It's cool. So pop on there, I'm gonna show you some other stuff. I'm also gonna do a color wash on this other door to get that ready to look like this door. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was some different stuff today. Um, but I'm going to continue working on this piece and it probably won't be done till mid next week. Thank you guys all for hanging out with me on a Saturday. Um, who will spray it? Well, Sean, of course. What else is he doing? He doesn't do anything else but spray for me, right? My husband, Sean, sprays my clear coats and it helps me out a ton. I am going to hand to him. Let me show you guys what, I, what my workspace looks like right now. I'm going to hand to him this armoire this piece right here that I'm working on, and then the bed frame, which I'm not gonna show you because it's actually done, um, and the bed frame that I worked on live last week too. I'm gonna give him all three of those to spray at the same time. Um, and then I get three pieces done, okay? So anyway, I'm gonna pop off and let you go, but if you didn't see from the get-go, go back and watch. That was the redesign with Prima decoupage papers we did, and then a stencil and gilding wax. Really pretty look. Um, all of those items are available at the links I put above in the post. There's a link for Redesign with Prima and also a link for um, Dixie Belle paint products that we use today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me at Brush by Brandy. Um, go give me a follow if you don't already. Um, otherwise, happy Saturday and I will catch you guys soon.